This is the 13 inch MacBook Pro but this is no ordinary MacBook because the one that you're currently looking at is the one that's powered by the new M1 chip. Now at this point you may heard a lot of things about it. You may heard things like, Oh this is the best MacBook Pro ever, the battery life is good, the performance is also very good. Or the other end of the spectrum we have people like her. But this MacBook sucks, everyday lag 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 only, I need to work one you know. Yep, so there's actually a lot of things to answer in this review. Like, how's the battery life? Is the performance okay? And most importantly, if you're someone who uses apps that are designed for x86, will Premiere Pro or Illustrator run smoothly on the ARM-based processor? And that's what we are going to find out on today's video. So before I stray too far, let me just talk about the design of the MacBook Pro and I don't think this needs much explanation because it looks and feels exactly like its predecessor. And I think most of you guys who own a MacBook know how sturdy and premium the aluminium chassis are. And this is actually my very first time using a MacBook Pro and I know I'm a bit late but the trackpad is one of the best thing I've used so far. I used to love using the mouse to go through each tab of my computer but now even though there's a mouse right next to me, I'll automatically use the swipe gesture controls and that proves how good the trackpad is. There's also a touch bar on top of the keyboard which is also totally new to me. So what you can control depends on what you're doing on your Mac. For instance, if you're using Safari, you can navigate each tab that you have opened by swiping left or right. If you're using Photoshop, it will show you a bunch of editing options like layers or brushes. So you can really customize to whatever you want the touch bar to do according to the apps that you're using. I know a lot of people don't really like the touch bar but personally, I like it. You can use familiar gesture like tap, swipe or slide directly on the touch bar to adjust settings and you can also do tasks in different apps. So it is actually pretty convenient. The 30 inch retina display is also bright and vibrant so watching videos or editing on this MacBook Pro is great and I have no complaints. But there is a problem. You'll find out that there's only two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left side and a headphone jack on the right. Since my MacBook Pro only comes with 256 gig of storage, I need an external drive to save all of my working projects. So if I'm charging the MacBook while working on my video project, I don't have any extra ports to transfer files from the SD card. That is why I have to rely on a dongle whenever I'm working on the M1 MacBook Pro. Before I used this MacBook Pro, I was on a ThinkPad X1 Extreme and that has pretty much every port that I would need. It definitely isn't an easy switch to make and I really miss not having to bring dongle everywhere I go. Now we have gone through the regular MacBook Pro stuff, let's talk about what makes this MacBook Pro so special. Which is the M1 chip! <laughs> So instead of using Intel processor, Apple says f*** it, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. And there we have it, the M1 chip. Unlike Intel processors that are built based on x86 architecture, the M1 chip is ARM based. So what this means is that M1 integrates a number of different things into a single chip and that includes the CPU, GPU, RAM, neural engine, SSD controller and a lot of the components which power the different features of the MacBook Pro. In other words, it's a lot like a smartphone processor. And because the new M1 MacBook Pro is ARM based, it can't run on regular computer apps that are designed for x86. And that is why Apple has built Rosetta 2. So Rosetta 2 is something like a translation tool that allows a Mac with Apple Silicon to use apps built for an Intel based Mac. Without Rosetta 2, you won't be able to run apps like Premiere Pro, Lightroom and even games like Dota 2. All of that sounds awesome. But if you're a video creator that relies on x86 apps like Premiere Pro, this MacBook isn't it. If you guys know me and have been following all the videos that I've created and edited, you know that I always shoot in 1080p. That's because my previous Lenovo ThinkPad that runs on i5 couldn't support high resolution and that is also one of the reasons why I've changed to this MacBook Pro in hopes that I could start editing in 4K. Well, but I've never been so wrong. Editing a 4K video is just so torturous. If you guys remember, I've actually edited Rory's video of the Mate Station S and everything was shot in 4K. Even the B-rolls, the handheld camera, everything is 4K. And once I've started editing them on Premiere, the app just keeps crashing and you know how annoying it is when the rainbow wheel appears. 
And the moment when you try to add fancy transition, keyframes or even title cards, the whole laptop just hangs. It is just so bad. Don't edit videos on Premiere Pro unless you are on a full HD timeline or you did not add any motion graphics, so something like an Ichimi video. The one I have is the 8GB RAM and 256GB storage version, so I'm not sure if the 16GB one will make a difference. But based on the few YouTube tech reviewers that I've watched, the 16GB MacBook Pro doesn't make a difference either. Editing videos on Premiere probably isn't a good idea even though you spec the M1 MacBook Pro out. But if you're running on natively supported video editing apps like DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro, you should see better performance. I know MacBook is not meant for gaming, but I thought it would be fun just to test them out. I can only play Dota 2 on low settings, which is on 60 frames per second. Anything above that would lag and the game would crash from time to time. So basically, the performance doesn't really hold up since there are still a bunch of apps not supported on Resident 2 just yet. But Adobe did mention that they are currently working on an update to make it natively compatible with M1 devices. But what's good about the M1 MacBook Pro is its battery life. Apple claims that this MacBook Pro has the longest battery life ever in a Mac, and it can last up to 17 hours of web browsing and up to 20 hours of video playback. Well, in my experience, the MacBook Pro can last around 3 to 4 hours on a busy day. So most of the time, I do video editing, go into Photoshop, and maybe typing out scripts or watch some videos. But 3 to 4 hours is actually 3 to 4 times better than Intel MacBooks, and we actually have two units right here in the office, and both of them could only last for around 1 hour, so that's actually pretty good for the M1 MacBook Pro. Besides the new processor, what's new about this MacBook Pro is the new operating system, and here we are looking at the brand new macOS Big Sur. One of the biggest changes in Big Sur is its interface and I really liked it. The interface now has a more modern and cleaner look which makes it more convenient. But to a certain extent, let me explain. With Big Sur, Apple has brought a couple of iOS features to the macOS interface. For instance, the control center. If you are familiar with iPhones, you know that you can access your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirDrop or even change the brightness and volume by swiping down the top right corner of your device. On MacBook, you can do the same by clicking on the control center menu which is located at the menu bar. But I don't find it as useful on a MacBook as I do on an iPhone because I can access many of these things on the keyboard itself. But I have to say, macOS Big Sur has the biggest impact on their native Safari app. One of the biggest changes is that you can now watch 4K HDR content on both YouTube and Netflix, which is something that you could not enjoy if you are still on Catalina. There's also something called Favicon, which allows you to see a preview of a web page when you hover your cursor over a tab. Safari also has tools so you can translate websites in English, Spanish, Chinese, French, German, Russian, Brazilian, and Portuguese. To translate a page, click View and then select Translation. A menu will appear with the available translation on your Mac. Select the translation you want and Safari will process the web page you are looking at and then display the translated page. So the question is, is the M1 MacBook for you? It's hard to tell because personally, I think the M1 MacBook Pro is for the in-betweeners. These are the people who does more than just browsing the internet and watching videos, but they are also someone who is not like a hardcore video or graphics editor. I'm not saying that the M1 MacBook Pro is bad. What I'm trying to say is that the M1 is still new and there are a lot of improvements and upgrades that Apple needs to work on. But the fact that this is a first-gen processor is actually pretty amazing. The battery life is amazing and it is only better if you're using M1 native apps. The only complaint I have with the M1 MacBook Pro is support for apps like Adobe since I use them almost every day. And who knows, in the future, once Adobe can finally run natively on MacBook Pro, the performance might be better. But what do you guys think about the new M1 MacBook Pro? So do let me know down in the comments below. So that's it for today's video. Remember to like our video if you liked it and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and also click on the notification bell icon so you won't miss any of our future videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!